How's it going everyone? Another video for you. I've been getting a lot of questions about stabilizing and some of you have a lot of problems or just don't know how to troubleshoot or to continue stabilizing your footage when something goes wrong. So I'm working on a project right now and let me just show you what I do to get my footage stabilized. So the first thing I like to do is have all my footage on my timeline. This is a good way to remember your footage so you know what you have to work with. So if you go, oh hey, I need this clip for this style, for this edit, for this part of the song, you can know where it is because you know you have it. So I like to do all my footage first and stabilize. The first thing you need to do is find your footage. I'm just gonna grab this clip right here and we're gonna start trimming it up. So you wanna trim it to the usable area is what I like to call it. So I'll trim it right here, go to the end, right where it stops, right here. Once you have that trimmed, you're gonna right click, pre-compose, move all attributes, adjust composition duration. This will trim up your footage in the main comp so you have only usable area. So you know everything you can work with and how long your footage is. So go into this pre-comp and the first thing I like to do is a stabilized motion. So this works well when you're doing a lock-on effect or when your subject is somewhat centered in your clip. So we'll click on this and you'll see that a little box comes up. In this case, I want the wheel to be the center of attention because throughout the clip, I'm pretty much focusing on that wheel. So I'm gonna start with the first frame, zoom in and set my box right around there and then I'll track it. So depending how big your box is or the stabilized point, depending on how big it is, this could take a little bit longer. So the smaller your focus point is, the faster this will go, but you need to keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't stutter or get out of frame in which you'll have to fix it. So just for an example, say right here at this point, it'll jitter to a different section and now it's gonna track a different point. So when you right click your Adobe and then you left click it, it'll basically close the application, not close it, but it'll minimize it. So then you can go back in and your timeline cursor will be back at the point where you stopped it. So you go find that point, adjust your points that you need to, maybe make it smaller, bigger, and then continue stabilizing and make sure all the points are accurate. So we'll go through all the points and make sure it's steady and smooth. Looks pretty good, so I'm gonna press apply. So you have two options now. One, you can scale, make sure your whole thing's in frame the whole time and leave it as is, or you can recenter to where you tracked. So I'm gonna change to proportional grid. So I'm gonna go to that center point where I tracked, which was the center cap of the rear wheel. I'm gonna scale in from here adjust the position, scale out, make sure I have everything in frame. And now you'll see that it'll stay tracked on that point that you chose. So now you can scale in how you want. I'll scale in just a little bit. And if you need to keyframe your position or anchor point and change it at the end. So now we have a locked on stabilization. So now that this is stabilized, you can pretty much go ahead and add your speed ramp, add whatever you want. So if I wanted to add a quick speed ramp on here, I would just apply one. So let me show you what it looks like right now. And then I'll show you another problem solving method that I like to do if there's any inconsistencies or jitters in your stabilized lock. So you can see it's speed ramped, but there's a little bit of a jitter in there. So what I like to do is go in that pre-comp, pre-compose this again, moving all the attributes. You don't need to open the new comp since that'll be done. And now you have a fresh palette with no effects on it. And what you can do now is add warp stabilizer onto this pre-comp. So let me rename these so you can see it better. So this comp is warp stabilize. The one in the pre-comp, which is the first one we did, that one is a stabilized motion. So we have three comps here. We have the stabilized motion comp, which is the first thing we did. So once this is stabilized, and then the next one we did was a warp stabilizer. So the warp stabilizer will go on top of the stabilized motion. So now, not only do you have a lock-on effect, but you also have a warp stabilizer to make sure it's super steady and smooth throughout. So this is a little trick I like to do, and a lot of you ask for this, so here you go. Here's an updated stabilized motion and warp stabilizer method or workflow, whatever you want to call it. Let me play it now, and you'll see how smooth this clip is after we did the stabilized lock and then added warp stabilizer in a separate composition. So you can see the jitter is gone. So for what it is, it did a great job. And this is the new updated version of how to stabilize your footage the proper way and the best ways. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be uploading a lot more, as I said. So subscribe to my YouTube, press the like button. And if you wanna learn more or get more into depth of After Effects, extensions, whatever, it's all available on my website, djordamedia.com. And I'll see you in the next video.